welcome, welcome to the clog barn. What I'm going to do for you this afternoon is to make a clog. Now all the clogs we do here we do just for demonstration purpose. These ones that I'm wearing around and the ones that are hanging up on the back wall and on the ceiling up above, they're all made in Holland and we import those ones in. There's still about five million pair of clogs still worn in Europe every year. They're not as bad as they look once you're used to wearing them and they're very good for keeping your feet nice and dry and nice and warm whenever the ground's cold and wet. There isn't really a real problem out there at the moment. There's a few puddles around the place. Yeah. I've been roaming around outside today. You can see these ones are, are quite wet. And they're a bit muddy around the place. You can see they are wet at the bottom from walking around the wet lawns outside. On the inside, they're still completely dry inside. It doesn't matter how much moisture you walk through, as long as the puddles aren't deeper than that, mm -hmm. the shoes will still keep your feet really warm and really dry inside. Until, of course, they end up looking like some of the ones we have down the bottom down here. So Apollo here is not real good for keeping your feet real dry. It's only good for a real sunny day, that one there. The half so yeah, it takes about six months of constant wear to wear them down to that stage. They won't last forever. Wearing them every day as we do and walking on that gravel road outside. For me, around about six months, and that's what you'll end up with a shoe on something like that. Trade them in. Trade them in, yeah. They just start getting comfortable when they get holes in them like that. <laughs> but these ones I've got on are about, oh, probably about two months old. I've got, a, I've got a new pair now. You can see a bit of a difference. You can see how they're actually starting to work. There you go. You can see quite a bit of a difference there. And that's only about two months. So it's another, you know, by, about, by about September, these will look like those ones there with the holes in the bottom of them. Now, clogs themselves trace back to the year 1200, where they originate in France. They don't originate in Holland like a lot of people think. They were first made or first worn by the French. The French don't call these shoes clogs, they call them sabo. You may have seen little sailing boat that has a picture of a clog on its sail. Those little sailing boats are also known as a sabo, and they were shaped very similar to what the old one shoe was. When the French works and work in the mills, if he didn't want to work any longer, he used to drop his clogs or his sabo into the works of the mills, and that's where we get the French word sabotage from, from all the trouble the old one shoes to cause. Mm. You can cause quite a lot of strife with one of these, let me tell you, if you get upset. <laughs> but when a clog maker makes a pair of clogs, he'd start with a block of freshly cut poplar. Now Bob would have shown you those on the way down today. He's a good fellow. He would have shown you all those trees that come through Kempsey, uh, through Grafton. Originally grown to make matchsticks from in the 50s and 60s. Since then, they're not being used for that anymore. And they're in that area around Grafton and, and Kempsey as well, more or less standing and going idle. Most of this has a tendency to have a lot of faults in it. If you have faults in your timber, You'll never wear them down to the extreme with that one I was holding up before. They'll crack or split more well before they wear you down. This one here, the cold on the, on the top there, because it sort of had, must have had a crack around it. And you can see there's sort of cracks all around those areas through the bottom there. If you start to wear that around, it will crack all the way through and fall completely apart. Also, it's really important the block be nice and fresh or green. You can see with this one, it's really quite dark on the end grain there. If it dries out, it becomes really quite tough and brittle and really hard to work. So we start with a nice fresh block, something like this. In the good old days, the old clock maker used to start by chopping the rough shape with an axe until he had something that looked a little bit like that. Then once he had that rough shape, he would then run around the block with what's known as a hook blade. To get it to a smooth, soft shape for him to stand up, which would look something a little bit like that. Now a hook blade is one of these. This multiplies your strength by about five times by the actual length of the blade. He would just hook that under there, then run around the block until he got exactly what he required on the outside. Now you can see that I can very easily just work away the outside of the block there. That's because the tips are still really nice and fresh. You can see I can just work away really easily because it's still nice and green there. It should be fairly pliable. You can see this, it's really quite rubbery but it's still nice and green. If it dries out completely, it'll become quite brittle and tough. This one here will probably break. You can see. Once it dries out, it gets to the stage that you have to throw the timber away, it becomes too hard to try and shape. Now, I won't sit and wield this one here for the next hour or so. It's too much of a nice day to be stuck here doing, doing that. You guys are running 10 minutes later already, haven't make it an hour and 10. I'll use my trusty machine in the corner here. This one will speed up the job for us just a little. It takes about a minute and a half to cut the inside, the outside shape, sorry, compared to about an hour or so, working away with the old hook blade. So we'll set the machine up and we'll start to get underway. Now while I'm setting it up, the best place to see it from naturally is in this open area in the middle here. Everyone just takes a couple of steps in. To make a pair by hand, you're looking at about five hours work. These are a bit quicker than that. These can make a pair of shoes in around about five minutes. So they're a bit quicker than what it would be doing at all completely by hand. 
how the machine actually works, we have a, a template on the back which is shaped the same as the outside shape of a clog or a shoe. That template and our block of timber will both spin together and hopefully all going well, we'll end up with an identical shape, the same as that template, sitting just here in about a minute and a half time. This shoe we're doing this, this, this afternoon is a size 21 bright, and that's for a child probably about 9 or 10 years old will finish the size 21 shoe. If anyone's brave enough later on, after we finish, there's some yellow ones on the floor down the bottom down there. If you've got the courage, you can go for a bit of a wander about. The trick is, they've got to be really loose on your feet. They have to be so they just slide straight on, straight back off. These ones that I've got on, as you can see, they're just sort of really loose on the feet. I get about three fingers in behind the heel. That's how they have to be. If they're too tight, you'll soon know you've got too much of timber stuck on any of your legs, I guarantee. You won't go very far at all. Now, if you watch this part of the block here, we should be able to see the outside shape of the shoe starting to take form from that block of timber. Here we go. <laughs> shape, all he had to do then for the next hour or so, with a gouger, something like this. Still, while the sho shoes were held firmly so they couldn't move, he then just slowly put away the inside shape until he got exactly what he required on the inside. It took about an hour and a half work to get the inside completely right, and again, it's really important that block be nice and fresh, because if it starts to dry, it just becomes harder and harder to try and, uh, to try and work. But, once more, Technology will save a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, gets you on time a little bit quicker, gets you out of here not one o'clock, because Bob's running horribly late today. He's supposed to be out at one. The, uh, he's not listening. Not even, not even looking. The, uh, this one will get you on, off hopefully, a bit closer to being on time. I thank you, John. Sorry. I've been hitting you for the last five minutes. I know, I know. Set it up and we'll get on the way. This one will be the inside shape. Takes about a minute and a half to do that, compared to about an hour or so working away with the old uh, gouges there. With these blocks being as fresh as they are, a lot of the time it'll look quite shiny around this area here, even to the extent that you'll actually see moisture or water running down and sometimes dripping off the top part of the shoe there. That depends on the block. We'll soon see once we get underway. Here we go.
And there we have our inside shape all cut. All we have to do now is to trim the front and the back off. A little bit tricky to try and walk this lump of timber still stuck on the front there. And all going well, we'll end up with a clog.